don't lower the fucking bar. When you set the bar high, there's a lot of people who literally try to bring the shit down, rather try to look at the, the puzzle and really try to figure it out. But the people who try to bring it down, that's the shit you, you just can't tolerate. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, man? Good, bro. How you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? Doing real good. You, we met like about a couple of years ago at uh, Agency Founder. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, for sure, dude. Was that 2021? 2020, last year. 2022. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, hell yeah. I remember you. Pools and landscapes and all that. So we did, yeah, we used to do pools. Uh, we still do pools, uh, but we, we moved to hardscapes and uh, roofing now. So pools, hardscape, and we're starting to do roofing as well. Uh, so kind of like serving three three different niches, uh, but like same in the home home service. Are you are you still uh, in the medical niche, or what, what yeah. are you doing right now? Okay, so awesome. Basically, pain management, all that stuff, and then we're horizontally scaling into dental in Q three. I see you. You're absolutely fucking crushing it in the lead gen game, bro. Uh, so I'm like, dude, I gotta, I gotta like kind of get some help from you because i've been i've been struggling to scale past 200k that's where i'm stuck at uh for the last five four months like it's 200k 210 190 180 then goes to 200 we were just like kind of like uh, stuck at that revenue level uh so i wanted to hop on a call kind of ask you like how did you break that barrier like the 200k to hit like four or 500k what was like the biggest piece like in your in your agency that you changed I've been through many plateaus. Um, we're currently at one right now. So we okay. fluctuate in between like 420 and 450. Um, okay. And it's been like that for the last five months. I take a lot of responsibility from it because I wasn't like super proactive before the plateau. Uh, but now we're super proactive on how to get past it. Um, whatever the number is, whether it's 200 or I, I forgot our stages. I think ours was like, 20k then it was 50k then it was yeah. 150k and then it was yep. 250k okay it was fucking weird then it was 350k and then now we're at the new it seems like it's been happening quite frequently um every 100k like we'll stay okay. at a specific place for like four or five months and then we'll break through um but the way I, the way i simply see it is there's like there's three levers to it one is like if you're stag stagnant, that obviously means that inflow is meeting outflow or yeah. inflow is even slightly declining is, is less than outflow. Meaning, so if you bring on, let's just say you bring on 30K worth of MRR, but you're losing 30K of MRR. Right. Overall, from the macro 30,000 foot view, that's exactly what's happening is yeah. you know, just as much as you're bringing in, right? And so one way to figure out what the real problem is, is um, what is your churn? Like, what's that percentage? Because if it's below 5%, if it's 5% or below, or maybe even six, yet, if it's below five, I mean, you're already doing great, but even five, six, you know, you can, there's always room for improvement in terms of churn, meaning like you can, marketing can do a better job mm. of creating more better leads or account management can do a better job within that department for strategy. There is ways to improve that. But it's not like saying like, oh, we're in a terrible place, like churn is the problem, our product's the problem. But if you look at like, if you have a 5% churn, but then you're only bringing in five clients a month, yeah. your, real, your real problem is sales, right? Because you can you can go from a 5 to a 4% churn to me is phenomenal in, in this digital agency space. Oh, yeah. It's fucking great. Um, so if you're in those numbers, always work to improve them and keep what you're doing in that strategy. But if you're only bringing in five clients a month, then this is where, this is the problem that we were facing is we're at a point now where, you know, if you have, if you have 150 clients, 5% of 150 clients is like eight clients. So you're still, eight. you're still at like a decent churn, but you're still losing fucking eight. And so if you bring on eight, you're netting even. So yeah, you, know, you break even, still, you didn't not grow. So the sales, force, the sales force needs to become stronger. So mm -hmm. we like to call it surplus, right? So if you're losing, let's just say you got 150 clients and it's a 5% churn, we'll call it seven and a half, eight clients or whatever. But now you're averaging on a monthly basis, 15 clients. If you surplus, which we call it seven clients a month, 
over a four month period, that's 28 clients, 28 times, let's just say you're charging 3K or maybe 2K, whatever the number is, right? That's yeah. basically adding on 90 Gs of MRR. Does that make sense? Like yeah, no, 100%. That, that, that makes total sense. My churn right now is around nine to 10%. Uh, and when I talk to Josh and like other people like in the lead gen, they're like industry standard is like uh, any less than 15%. But I feel like uh, it should be less than 7%, right? Like, yeah. And I know you mentioned like 5% is like gold, like you're, you're good. Uh, so would you say 9 to 10% is bad? Or do you feel like I should work on bringing it down to five even more? Because I work with home service contract and I just for pay and I, my, my core offer is done for you lead gen. Uh, yeah. right. And then we're, we're starting to add more services and I'm going to talk, talk to you about that as well, but like paid ads is our like primary. So churn on paid ads is, I'm guessing it's a little higher than SEO or like, you know, other types of products. W would you agree? Yeah. So, I mean, for us personally, we're, we're really a, a, a straight media buying appointment setting product. Like that's what we do. Got it. We're not into SEO or website okay. building. It's just too now, I'm not saying that that's a bad idea yeah. if that's what you're doing. I mean, if you, at the end of the day, long-term, if you want to, you know, your, your agency is going to be more of an asset if you build a $12 million year agency that has Facebook, PPC, SEO, you know, Got it. you know what I'm saying? But for us, uh, before we get into that complexity, we're first getting this part better, um, just the, the paid ads part. Um, mm, okay. But what I would say is for me personally, like we, we just have such high standards, um, a 5% is like what everything needs to be at. And that's like the bear, that's the bear expectation. The 4% mm. part where we've been, we've been trying to like figure it out over the year, averaging 4% over the year, really fucking that's amazing. Good. So the four would feel great, like very superior. Five is like this shit better happen, like in the fives. That's because I'm basing my ways of operating business is like, I right. want to I want to build something great and be way above so that when we do, scale even further and have the ability to exit just everything looks good you know like churn looks good everything looks fucking good so we kind of push that pace in the company um of that makes sense do, do you do you feel like i and i know you're doing like media buying and, and appointment setting uh do, do you run into issues with like exclusivity like hey i can't take on another client in this area yeah. so doesn't that isn't that a constraint for you to scale like because i'm running into that issue with pools there's only so many pool borders right there's like probably like forty thousand. And half of them are, are not at the revenue level where we want them to be. So they're not a good fit. So there's, yeah. that's the biggest issue I ran into with like scaling uh, with like exclusivity. So that's why I'm moving to hard skips as well. Yeah, no, it's smart. I mean, that's exactly why we're moving into the next space is dental. Um, okay. I'd say probably like 25% of our calls, we run into an exclusivity issue. Um, okay. We are in so many markets across the United States. I like to take the... Alex Ramosi analogy. Now I probably ain't, I'm not as serious. I'm not taking it as far as he is, but I am taking it to the point of like, he has this analogy where it's like, if you have a bucket and there's holes on the bucket, that's leaking water before you go into a new niche, make sure you see all those holes. And mm. so the water overflows into the next bucket. And really what that means for us is just making sure that our, we have every hire needed, like, and, 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 for us, it's like making sure the team in each position that we know is needed to then get to um, eight figures a year is there. Um, so one is hiring, which is one hole in the bucket. Um, right now, we're looking for just a savage, not just a media buyer, but a marketing director, someone who's like super mm. offensive, very vocal, um, and just good at Facebook, creative, Google, and then also has business savviness in terms of like, we're still looking for that person. Right now, okay. it's me and and me and someone else, but like now we're pretty much running multiple roles being that type of person. So that's one pain point of ours is having that guy because we basically see it in terms of like, there's like four variables in the equation of getting client results in, in our industry. It's probably the same as yours. The first one is net leads. For us, net leads is like how many viable leads on average do we get for our clients with mm. each which eat with each ad spend, right? Out of those leads, we then measure what's the schedule to leads percentage average in our company, meaning how good is that our team at being as efficient as possible with every viable lead? Now that comes down to speed to lead, follow-up frequency, right. phone execution, skills, all just all of that. 
ties into that. So we track that metric. And then what goes into next is show, show rate. There's really only three, okay. variables, sorry, three variables right, right. that equals number of appointments or number of opportunities or number of whatever the hell it is. And so if you're not, well, for us personally, we hyper focus on each variable of that in the equation. Um, and where am I going with this? So basically um, for us personally, we have our scheduling team dialed. I think we have like just an insane. Um, That's amazing. Hell yeah. It's, it's, it's basically a sales team, like all the KPIs and everything we do, our numbers are incredible where we can get better is is on the marketing side and okay. so that's one thing we're looking to do right now consistently looking for that person what is another hole in the bucket another hole in the bucket is we got to like 400k basically word of mouth referral we probably ran 20k in ads in the last really three. yeah that's interesting okay. in the last three years so the big reason why we plateaued in between like 420 and 450 for the last few four three four five months is um we reached a point where referrals was definitely meeting outflow right because we're automatically at a good churn we're still losing seven eight clients a month and that's that's about what our organic referral word of mouth game was bringing in and so what happened was it was like cold turkey of getting back into the inbound mindset of like all right we got to fucking run ads let's fucking go and then i just took it a step further because i already know i'm not trying to like do this little plateau again so then we we're building out an outbound team. It goes down to that simple equation, right? If, if you're averaging, like last year, I think we averaged 10 new clients per month, oh, right? Yeah, okay. That's what we averaged, right? And so this year, the goal is to get to a 20 month, 20 client per month average. And the reason why is if we do, if we lose anywhere from seven to 10 clients a month, well, I'm not, even if we're at 13, 14, 15, it's still like small micro wins. increments. Yeah. But it's not going to be like getting that big fucking jump, which is, you know, what a lot of companies try yeah. to do. I see what you're saying. Net positive, right? At the end of the day, it's like net positive every single yeah. month in small increments. It's okay. the surplus. You know, and the goal is to make the surplus as big as possible. So how do we do that? There's there's two fucking major teams here. One team is um is the churn team, which is the fulfillment team, which also includes account management. So fulfillment is going to be marketing, scheduling, delivering the actual physical result. And then account management is the driver and relationship, coaching, respect, all, all that tied into one. Yeah. That all reflects on churn. So the goal is like, if that whole team is super focused on always bringing churn down and everything's bonused on churn, and all the effort and energy goes to churn. And then the three, the three variables I told you, which is net leads, yeah. uh, Schedule appointment to show yeah. rate, then I already know we have an incentivized system and a very uh, KPI driven system that is maxing out the results we get for the clients, which is half a churn. And then account management is also totally compensated on the level of experience they bring and churn. So you got all these people just oh, focusing yeah. okay. on that. But the other side is the sales side. Um, and that's getting to an average of, for us, it's 20 new clients a month. And so we, if we're doing word of mouth and we have that working, well, now we can do inbound, but I'd rather say for inbound, what if we only get like five to six a month, which is basically realistic right now, like five, six, seven mm -hmm. a month. That's still in getting it there. So for the last quarter, we started hitting outbound and outbound was a, seat, a huge missing opportunity that just requires straight brute force and work ethic. And um, we were able to get, um, like 25 to 30 percent of our conversions now are coming from outbound, meaning we're just straight up cold calling the clinic. Obviously, we put a lot of work into the script, into the offer, into how we do it. But we have our first SDR starting June 5th after myself, one of our AEs, and then our uh, basically like a fractional CRO. We're, we're okay. literally working out the outbound ourselves. Like you call, I call, he calls. Mm. and we're just going to figure this shit out one hour a day every single day so with the outbound at the end of the day our outbound goal is to the ultimate goal to have three sdrs that conservatively would bring in five clients a month so that would be 15 in outbound let's just say referrals only ends up being five and and and, and inbound only ends up being like five to eight well now that's looking more like 20 to 30 clients a month Mm. it's i know everyone talks numbers and shit but you got to think about it okay if we're spending 10k in fucking facebook ads and now we're spending another 15k in salaries for outbound you know i mean for us to go from 
from 10 averaging clients a month to 20 to 30, you know, we're also investing 25 additional G's a month to do that. So it's that okay. shift, that shift between like, okay, now it's not as pro- profitable on the front end for a lot of these acquisitions. But if you're looking at the gross LTV and your average retention, you're going to realize your shit's going to start marching forward. Mm. Especially if that entire squad is focused on what I just told you, which is churn. Which is the churn. I see what you're saying. So you're willing to lose money on the acquisition, right? Like, but like, as long as the LTV, you're maximizing on LTV on the back end side, as long as the churn stays low, right? Like the client will stay for you with you years. Uh, I wouldn't say, so I wouldn't say lose money on the acquisition. What I mean though, is like, if you're so used to getting referrals, you're so used to paying nothing and just charging full price. Right. But now with Facebook ads and outbound, our goal, a great goal is just to have a three to one on the front end. Even if we're at a two to one, I'm good. Now losing shit on the front end. uh, Not really a big fan of it. Okay. (laughs) Break even. even. I'll get there. I still don't like that, okay. to be honest. I don't know what. Maybe over time I'll realize even break even is fine. But I like to set like if we're spending 10k in Facebook ads, I want a three to one on on row ads for sure. Oh yeah. You okay. know, I mean, I do. Ideally, I'd want to say five yeah. to ten. Like some of these people who, because we have done those numbers at four, five, tens, and just like fuck yeah. But when it all starts to average out, what is it? You know, I I. So the goal is three to one, two to one, but overall, just to make sure I'm not losing you, you have a plateau is because inflow is meeting outflow or inflow is less, than, is less than outflow, which you see people start to teeter back down. That's the only, it's the only way it happens, right? And so you got to look at it. Outflow is churn. Well, how healthy is your churn? So right now you're saying you're at a, a nine to 10%, right? Okay. So that means 100%. In my opinion, there's a lot of room to be made in there whether it's through account management or whether it's through results or whether it's through both, not even only account management, even through experience. So like for us personally, we have, we have a mastermind for our clients uh, that all gets transformed into a course. And we have some of the top clinics showing exact sales processes, exact strategies on what they're doing right now. That's a churn play. You know, we're even trying to help them become better business people and better salespeople. Mm. Community. Anything to fucking get to 40% churn. We're doing do you do it. that weekly or monthly? Like so the mastermind? We, we do it bi-weekly. Bi-weekly, okay. Kind of a operation that we're uh, trying to get more efficient. Um, but okay. I think bi-monthly is fine because it even puts more emphasis on it. Mm. Versus like, okay. hey, we do it twice a week. I see what you're saying. Like you know, and we have yeah. like, our client's time in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah, we do that too, but we okay. we do it weekly. And I, I noticed the attendance started to drop on once we start to do weekly. So I'm thinking about changing it to just doing bi-weekly. Uh, in your in your weekly calls, do you have one of your top performing client uh, hop on and talk about it, or do you, are you the host or are you coaching your clients? No, no, our our cl- our clients are are running the whole thing. Interesting. Yeah, I like that. That's yeah. interesting. Like credible people, you know, like straight up, boom, this is who I am. This is who, why you should listen to me. And then boom, goes into it. And and I like that. You talk, you know, there's a lot of stuff being discussed on there. But basically at the end of the day, it's like how savage your product is and results. And then the experience. And then if you take the product also includes right now, if you do it too, is also the business coaching, the mastermind community. So again, that's one component. The goal is to lower churn as much as possible. But I think one of the big so basically for you, what I could already see is if you're at a nine to 10% churn, if you have a hundred clients, how many clients do you have? We are currently at about 82 right now. 80. Okay. So let's just say you have 80, right? And nine, nine to 10% of that is, is basically the seven to eight clients a month losing, right? Which is yep. just like us. So you have to bring on seven to eight new clinics a month, which is like, that takes work. This is exactly like us. There's no difference yeah. here. Bring churn down. We should be an ever lasting thing and everyone should be bonused on that. That's the fulfillment operating side. And then obviously you're plateaued. So you're not getting any more than seven to eight a month, right? This is not happening. So how are you going to get that to, how are you going to get that to 20 a month? And what are your current channels right now? What's contributing to seven to eight a month? So we are right now, we're, we're averaging anywhere from five to 10. Some months we did 15 clients too. Uh, yeah. But then the, I include churn some of the clients that go on pause 
uh, like their ad accounts got disabled. And then, you know, it's like next month, like, hey, can we like, hey, hold off. I'm waiting on funds, like little issues like that. Yeah. Uh, like there's no revenue coming in. We can't charge them. So I include that as well as part of our churn. Right. Yeah. So that that's that's the biggest problem in the back end side. Like there's two two buckets. One's the client that actually cancels. And then the second client is like, hey, uh, their ad account got disabled and we never heard back from them or it's completely ghosting. So on the front end side, the biggest issue that we were getting was we were getting a lot of like unqualified leads uh, coming in, in, in our in our pipeline. So that's where I'm working on right now, kind of fixing our uh, added a new, new DSL and just so doing all ads? the leads. Yeah, we're running ads. So, so most of your clients are coming from ads? Great ads. Okay, so I think the two easiest avenues you can fix right now is one ads making that as best as possible and then two you know if you can find some way to get more referrals word of mouth type stuff um okay but you should have like if you if your goal is hey let our goal is have an average of 15 clients per month right like that do you guys talk yeah. about do you guys have that goal for a sales yep. team we hey. we actually have a 20 like we need to bring in 20 clients every single month so we have 22 and, and it's fucking not easy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's not. Yeah, we're not selling these. Uh, and this is no offense to anyone. Um, but our our we're not selling like a thousand dollar program, fifteen hundred. Yeah. Like our our shit's thirty three thousand two hundred fifty for like one niche, one campaign, all that type of stuff. So it's like I don't know. I just see people. We bring in twenty thirty clients a month, but they they charge you know twelve hundred bucks. I mean that makes sense. Yeah, we we charge a minimum three k. Uh, and then the the tier one up is four k. So it's 3K and 4K. I like and those. We only do 90 day, 90 day contracts. Yeah. So those are good price points. So if the goal is 20 clients per month, then it's either you figure out a way to even spend more money on Facebook or whatever you got to do there. For us, we're trying to get like our four avenues dialed in. Uh, I'd rather have I'd rather have five outbound, five Facebook, five referral, and five partners than 20 Facebook for me personally. I like that diversify uh, okay that takes okay. more fucking work right this is the part where like i feel like eight figure companies and agencies are really built is when the sales pipeline and the channels are more dialed in and more mature so if you have two to three outbounders which is not nowhere compared to like what hormozis was but you have two to three so that's producing fucking 80 calls a day scheduling one to three demos a day that's still an an, an inflow now you have to build the team. You got to do all that, but then you got inbound. How much can you spend on Facebook to where it doesn't make sense, right? So for us, anything below two to one is going to start pissing me off. So what is that? Ten k, twelve k, fifteen k? Because you know you can just spend more, spend yeah. more, but the more you spend, you can realize, oh fuck, we're just. I see what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> we we scaled it up to thirty k, and then that was the worst one. I think twenty k is like the max I've seen for for my for my niche, where the cost for acquisitions around. 1500 2k uh if once we did hit 30k in that spend like our our cpa went up really really high missing returns yeah yeah uh, so i see what you're saying okay which is why though if you do have a way to horizontally scale where it's like similar markets but then you can just widen the audience right which is super smart this, that's why we're going into dental dude because like okay. can, we, can we get to 600 700k with what we're currently uh doing yeah but now we're gonna like literally inch each spot that we don't have and it's just taking too long Forever. To yeah that, right so i'd rather go now like we'll still max this out over time because we're still going to be there but i'd rather sink my feet into okay. a new, 60 000 new businesses take our business model same thing over there and that's when fucking twenties for sure damn gonna come because we pay, we spend ten if we spend ten to twenty k in dental I I bet you inbound yeah. at least ten to fifteen then we're gonna have the outbound then we're gonna have still the referral word of mouth and so this is the point where us going from the mid four hundreds to now eight figures is really the fact that we fucking solved the 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 appointment setting and the demo issue. And there's, mul there's, multiple, what you're saying. Okay. there's multiple variables in that fix. We added outbound, we added inbound, and then we didn't only stop at that because I don't want to deal with this shit in, at a in a, another 100, 100. Yeah. Okay, we're going into dental. Because oh I've been, done yeah. this thing. It's been like four times now in the last 
three years where it's just like boom stuck boom it's stuck, stagnant stuck okay uh, i'd rather get stuck at the next level so everyone's working on churn now let's become a real company and develop a real uh sales a, a, a real sales machine you know with multiple different channels that we can scale and each channel has its own goal you know so for outbound it's three to one facebook three to one on roas um that's just our initial like where our heads at Got it. okay no that makes sense uh how, how big is your team right now uh and what percentage of your top line goes on payroll so i've seen like some agencies spend 45 percent of their top line some agencies 60 like as i know it also depends on like if you're in a scaling uh season or if you're like you know just stagnant yeah. as well uh yeah. what does that look like for you shit that's a good question um we're we're at about 45 percent right now i think we spend about 70 72k on payroll right now like every month i freak out sometimes i'll be honest bro i'm like fuck man we're spending a lot on payroll so if you think of our biggest expense is payroll um yeah so let me see here if i was gonna guess i'd probably say 40 40 to 45 percent 40 to 45. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Um, and when you, when you scale up to, let's say, you know, I'm at about 180 to 200 K, my margins are like 25% net right now, 25 mm -hmm. to 28. Uh, what should I aim for as far as like net margins at around 400 K, 500 K? What, what, what should you aim for, for net margins at 400 K? I mean, this is almost like a personal question of like one. Yeah. What are you even trying to do with this company? Are you just trying to max out cash or are you trying to hit a specific exit. milestone to, to exit? So just if, keep it as a cash cow, literally just, just me just, completely out of the business, but it just keeps bringing me consistent cash. Yeah. So me personally, dude, I hate anything below a 40% margin. Like it fucking drives me crazy. Really? Um, yeah, dude. Like, anything below anything above five percent churn pisses me off too like straight up like it's like personal <laughs> like i take it yeah. first, you know um i don't like to deal with the averages and what other people i'm not other people like you are not you have not not you specifically but the way we've designed our team and our product and who we are and, and how we think is like like in 2022 we had a, a 40 48 49 percent profit margin and that's included that's amazing holy yeah 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 like that's, that's including my salary. So, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, how, how big is your team right now? Like, what is it? 30 have, people? Yeah. Right now we probably have like 28 um, employees. 28 full-time or including like VAs, everybody. Yeah. Full, full-time people. We only have one. Actually we have three VAs. Um, three VAs. Okay. Um, so if you include the VAs, it's going to be like 30, 31. 30, 31. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Cause it's funny. Cause I, I literally have the same amount of employees in my agency. Uh, mm -hmm. I have nine full-time on W2 and then rest are like VAs uh, th that I have. And we're at about 29, 30 employees. Um, but, uh, but yeah, what's, what's your like org chart? Do you have an operator uh, who handles everything like for, for, for your agency? I have a savage okay. operator um savage like we have a coo okay we have a, market, we have a marketing department for clients we have an account management department we have our client sales reps which is appointment setters there's only one person there right now but we have a sales manager who manages the appointment setters uh now we have we're starting the the um the sdr team the outbound team so if we just call it a sales department that'll include sdr and closer um right now we outsource our own we outsource our ads right now um for agency for agency all the gotcha. media okay. we outsource that right now but we all i shoot we, we shoot all the content like we have all the we do all that but they're the one pushing all the buttons your yeah. your operator when you hired him or her were you looking for more like a people's person or was he or is she a more technical person yeah so he's our third hire Okay. So he's been he's he's basically been with us since 50k a month. Um and wow, okay. Um, hiring a COO, uh, yeah, it'd be painful. Like I'm not I think it can be done, but I honestly believe hiring people internally, like once you really 
get better and better at hiring just fucking good people. And really what I mean by that is that doesn't, that doesn't even include their skill sets. You know, it's more of like their characteristics and their values and stuff. So you, you could take someone who's just like really takes their work personal and like really does want yeah. to be time and, and, and you can give, them, give them the skills. Like that's what happened for a lot of people. Even our, our new sales manager, she came up as a scheduler fucking super extrovert super respectable leading leading you know literally number one in, in kpi uh we would hire her anyways even if she was five or something because she has way more managerial skills and stuff like that but you take someone who like has high expectations in themselves really gives a fuck and then they can prove even like above average to even the best results that, that those are the people who who are going to run i mean that's just what we've done you know what i'm saying um okay interesting that's because we don't have this crazy massive budget it's a little bit harder for us to go out and like snipe a coo who's has a lot of experience as a coo right they're probably looking to work with more of like a 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 million dollars right yep so you got to be scrappy at first i think that's what all this is too in the beginning is like how scrappy are you you know how resourceful are you if you can get the hiring right and then you can get the training and the kpis and just yeah. how you your organization, right? You know, you you should be able to like pop out some some good people. I, I have a question. How many accounts does each client success rep handle right now in your like in your account agency? Manager? Account manager? Yeah. 75. Yeah, account manager. 75. Each. And they're able to touch base with every single client every month. Twice a month. That's insane. My rep is at about 60, I think 55 clients and she's tapping out. She's like, I can't do it. H how did you maximize that capacity? Yeah. So 75 is like, it's that limit where it's been the limit the whole time. And um, we're still debating if it's on a fine line of like, is this more harmful or is this, is, is this better? Yeah. I like to find out. I like to find out where the true thresholds are. Um, one of the ways is one, you have to have just good account managers, super capable people like me and you, basically. Like if you talk to our account managers, it'd be no different than talking to me. Like straight up. That's it's, amazing. Wow. Yeah. They're bonus on that. And and the way bonus is set up is like they're everything's bonus, everything's audited. So it's like if you qualify for bonus, which is churn, you have to have a minimum of two touch points, XYZ. So everything's like factored into like the bonus of like what the requirements are. Yeah, it's seven it's 75. For marketing, that blew my mind, bro. For 60. 75. Marketing is 60. Marketing is 60. Okay. So each media buyer is, is handling about 60 accounts. Okay. No, that, that makes sense. And, and I think that's I like probably. Profit. That's because I like profit and I like more efficiencies and figuring out ways to do more than less than just having this massive fucking team that's not even that efficient yet. I'd rather find out, like, hire better people, hardworking people, and find out what's the tipping point and then reduce it by like 5%, 10% max. Because really one thing that we think about all the time for me is, is, is labor efficiency. And it's a simple model. If you want to be more profitable, we'll check this out. Take account management from 50 to 75, take marketing from 40 to 60, take schedulers from five to 10. Now you're basically creating a lot more margin off of that initial payroll, you know? Does your, when, when let's say your CEO comes to you, be like, hey, we need to hire another client success rep. And you know, like each person can handle more than what they are at right now. For example, mine, like each is handling about, uh, one's handling 45, one's handling about 50, something like that, right around 80, 80, 80 mark. Uh, so I asked my operator, be like, hey, we, we, we need to open up our onboarding calendar even more because sales team cannot onboard someone within the next three days. Because our onboarding time went up to like a week, uh, 10 days, up to 10. I'm like, we need to onboard everybody within three days of closing them. Uh, and then she comes back to me like, hey, we need to hire one more person. I don't think they have more capacity. Uh, have you had that conversation or has, has your operator ever had that conversation with you? So you're saying like your account managers right now are too busy to do an onboard, let's just say tomorrow or the next day? Correct. Yep. And why are they too busy? Uh, either check-in calls uh or they have like uh, internal meeting with like om they, they have like their internal operations yeah. and ma management meeting yeah um uh, third would be they already have an existing onboarding call on their calendar 
or a launch call. Um, yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, so basically we, we have blocked off time spots in everyone's calendar for an onboard. So obviously if we bring on seven, if we bring on seven to 10 clients in a week, it's just one of those weeks where it's like, boom, there is going to be a slight delay there. It's not like it's like wide open. Yeah. But for the most part, we're, we're trying to schedule an onboard for sure, for sure. And then uh, really it should be like two days max for us. Interesting. So, but what okay. we've realized too is like, so we have, we already have our third account manager who's already now at, I believe she has like 15 clients. So okay. once you start reaching capacity for real, you have to bring in that third one, you know, but you have to set that number. Like what's the standard? I'll tell you right now, if one account manager was plateaued at 30 and the other one was at 50, when 50 is like the standard, like we're, that's just not going to work out. So it really depends on the rep more than anything, right? Like how much, how, how many accounts they can actually handle. It, hell yeah, it does. It's just like a sales position. The account management role is a sales position at the end of the day. You're not only operating quickly and communicating, but you're also selling the shit we need from them and getting it in the fastest time possible. And then consistently getting new things for them, like content and things like that. Get, getting them on that monthly Zoom call every single month, which is like respecting. And then you're also upselling these people. So it requires them. Um, it's not an easy job. It's a, it's a tough job. So it's not for everyone. It's, it's a tough job. I was personally telling our team recently, account management is like literally such a big fucking deal. It's hard. The company yeah. leaking out or not. Um, it's so, so important because it's not just churn, it's upsells too. I mean, our account management team has like four things that they're measured on every month in terms of their performance. For the number one most important thing is churn and we calculate rev churn, um, like how much revenue you're losing. We don't want to lose any more than 10K in revenue um, per account manager. The next one's upsell. So you have to upsell a minimum of 10K a month too. And the bonuses are linked between the two money targets. And so if anyone upsells more than they churn, they get another thousand dollar bonus. So now we have fucking upsellers and people reducing churn because if they create a surplus, then they get a thousand bucks. Because if we can break you on upsell and churn, that's not even including all the other sales. That's just internally. That's interesting. Wow, I need to change my KPIs because I'm only doing it based on churn right now. N nothing on upsell. So they have no incentive to upsell existing client. You need, they need to know what to upsell. You know, it's like. Okay. Okay. And you, you probably have, do you, do you also do like referral commissions as well uh, for your account manager if they ask for a referral from an existing client? No. Um, no. The reason why is our product itself gets referrals. And so just saying that an account manager got a referral is bullshit because we get referrals no matter what. So it's just kind of like, makes sense. Takes away, like literally we changed this probably like eight months ago. Someone can hide on just all the referrals, but the real skill sets, the upsell, the real skill is getting them to commit to adding on another campaign for another two to $3,000. So if you have all their focus like on that, that churn, you know, you're, you're really developing like, salespeople like legit people who can fucking move shit yeah it's so literally you know, sales you front want, and back end yeah you want you want account management sales people and I, I don't mean sales like trying to take but it's like yeah you're selling content fast you're selling the zoom you're going to have every month and them having the highest show rate you're selling the things we need you're selling the upsell you're the face of the company in, in that sense like that goes into turn. a lot of yeah. stuff to do this was awesome, bro. This was this was fucking amazing, dude. I appreciate your 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 time and giving yeah. me this fucking advice, dude. This was fucking insane. All right, I already know what to do. Um, Develop the sales pipeline, right? Like the the yeah. sales machine. Develop the sales machine to get to twenty a month. You know, it's, and 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 to me, it's I gotta much. diversify my acquisition, like you said. Facebook ads, maybe a little bit of referrals. And in order for me to get referrals, I need to bring my churn down. Clients are happy; they're gonna, they're gonna get the recommend our product to other contractors and then vertically uh, horizontally scale. Um, and the reason why I also like outbound is we can, we can fix quality by outbounding. So if we look, we, if we start calling all the companies who we already know our players in the space that aren't our clients, I mean, that's just snipe shooting fucking talent, you know, quality where Facebook, you have to do a lot of bullshit. Outbound is great, dude. Like it, but it, like that. that's what separates most Eight figure companies in my perspective is they built out that that machine and each 
as you go from referral to inbound to even partnerships, which is hard to land, like you have to be super legit to do that. And then outbound, it all takes, you know, uh, just diligence and, 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 um, and hard work. But then you get to your 20 and then you keep turning down. Man, if you get surplus 10 a month, if you surplus 10 a month um, for like a year, I mean, your next plateau would be huge. You'd probably be like 500, 600. And then another variable is then increasing your price, which we all, which we're always working to do, right? Always trying to increase the price. You know, you increase price by 500. Um, that has a big impact on. That's huge. Price. Yeah. On the revenue. No, I like that. Wow. Yeah. I like that. Okay. No, I'm going to, I'm going to do that, dude. Yeah. Talk, man. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. I'm sorry. I probably asked you a ton of questions. No, no. Um, that's the shit, bro. I'm telling you right now, like, I'm swinging for the the five million dollar uh, yearly profit, so I can sell this shit. To be honest, like I'm, this is like it's cool, but I'd rather just get all the people, get all the systems, build that real fucking legit shit, and then have be more like private healthcare agency with what we do, and then Dude, sell it. Mad respect for to you for making that 45 percent net. Uh, that's unheard of, like for me, like in the lead gen, like at that level, right? Obviously, if you're doing 100K, that's easy, right? Like the more you scale, it goes down. So I'm like, you must have built a really, really cool, like efficient system on the back end to be able to have that margin. It's just the standard. It's literally, it's the standards of like what you want the profit margins to be, and then the people you need to hire to even fulfill those roles, and then. Not only that, when people start to squeal and, and do all that, it's like not just, okay, no, it's like, no, like these people can do it. This is just based on like your time efficiency. It's just never lower the bar. It's literally a, a principle in principle. It's just don't lower the fucking bar because when you set the bar high, there's a lot of people in that B area range who will literally try to bring the shit down then then rather try to look at the, the puzzle and really try to figure it out and some puzzles take fucking a year scratching your head realizing what the fuck is gonna do it but the people who try to bring it down that's the shit you you just can't tolerate because that will definitely make your you can see more um just more mediocre that's gold right there what you just said i like that yeah b players are gonna bring it down like there's no way we can hit it you gotta bring it down it's on real estate you know, trying to like that. I yeah, no, you'll, you'll, you'll hear it all the time. That's not doable. You know, maybe bonus should go from here to here because no, like a bonus is meant for excellence, like for things that were higher than average, not bonus. Bring the bonus down to average and then bonus just happens fucking every month. Like what the fuck? No, you know, but then again, pay, pay your people well you know, base pay and all that should be super well. And then bonus should be, bonus should be things that like legit are like, dude, it's a fucking solid month, you know? <laughs> all right, man, I'll send you the recording, but no, we'll, we'll set up a call. All right, brother. All right, man, take care. Bye. Peace.